Good morning. Welcome to the Daily Office. Thanks for joining me. I'm Brother Bill and this is Morning Prayer for Thursday, May the 27th. And please join me. Open my lips, my mouth shall declare your praise. Alleluia, do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy the workers of iniquity. Alleluia. Psalm 37. Please recite it with me. Alleluia, do not fret because of the wicked, and do not envy the workers of iniquity. For they shall soon be cut down, and wither like the grass of the field. Trust in God, and do good, and you will dwell in the land and be fed. Delight yourself in the Most High, and God shall give you the desires of your heart. Commit yourself to the Most High, trust, and God shall act. God shall bring forth your righteousness like the light and your judgment like the noonday sun. Rest in the Most High, and wait patiently. Fret not when the wicked prosper, who plot to break down the needy and the poor. Cease your anger and forsake your rage, and do not fret, for it leads to evil. For the wicked shall perish, but those that wait on the Most High shall inherit the earth. For soon the wicked shall have gone, you cannot see their homes because they are no more. But the meek shall inherit the earth and enjoy abundance of peace. The wicked plot against the just and gnash on them with their teeth. The Most High shall laugh at the wicked, for God sees that their day is coming. The wicked have drawn their sword and have bent their bow to cast down the poor and the needy and to slay the upright. But their swords shall pierce their own hearts and their bows shall be broken. What little the righteous have is better than the riches of many wicked. For the arms of the wicked shall be broken, but the Most High upholds the righteous. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Do not fret because of the wicked. Do not envy the workers of iniquity. Alleluia. A reading from Deuteronomy chapter 4, beginning at verse 32. For ask now about former ages, long before your own, ever since the day that God created human beings on the earth. Ask from one end of heaven to the other. Has anything so great as this ever happened? Or has, it, or has its like ever been seen or heard of? Has any people ever heard the voice of a God speaking out of a fire, as you have heard, and lived? Or has any God ever attempted to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation, by trials, by signs and wonders, by war, by a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, and by terrifying displays of power, as Yahweh your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes? To you it was shown so that you would acknowledge that the Most High is God. There is no other besides him. From heaven he made you hear his voice to discipline you. On earth he showed you his great fire while you heard his words coming out of the fire. And because he loved your ancestors, he chose their descendants after them. He brought you out of Egypt with his own presence by his great power driving out before you nations greater and mightier than yourselves, to bring you in, giving you their land for a possession, as it is still today. So acknowledge today and take to heart that the Most High is God, in heaven above and on the earth beneath, there is no other. Keep his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you today for your own well-being, and that of your descendants after you, so that you may long remain in the land that the Most High your God is giving you for all time. Here ends the lesson. Alleluia, wait on the Most High and keep God's way. Alleluia, Psalm 37, and please recite it with me. Alleluia, wait on the Most High and keep God's way. God will free you from the wicked, and you will inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you shall see it. 
I've seen the wicked triumphant, spreading themselves like a green bay tree. Yet they passed away. I sought them, but they could not be found. Mark the just and see the upright, for their end is peaceful. But the sinners shall be destroyed together. They have no future. The Most High saves the righteous. God is their strength in the time of trouble. The Most High shall help them and deliver them. God shall deliver them from the wicked and save them, because they trust in God. Alleluia. Glory to you, source of all being, eternal word and Holy Spirit, as in the beginning, so now and forever. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. Wait on the Most High and keep God's way. Alleluia. A reading from Paul's second letter to the Corinthians, chapter 3, beginning at verse 1. As uh, are we beginning to commend ourselves again, surely we do not need, as some do, letters of recommendation to you or from you, do we? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, to be known and read by all, and you show that you are a letter of Christ prepared by us, written not with ink, but with the Spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Such is the confidence that we have through Christ toward God. Not that we are confident of ourselves to claim anything is coming from us. Our confidence is from God, who has made us confident to be ministers of a new covenant, not of letter, but of spirit. For the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. Now if the ministry of death chiseled in letters on stone tablets came in glory, so that the people of Israel could not gaze at Moses' face, because of the glory of his face, a glory now set aside, how much more will the ministry of the Spirit come in glory? For if there was glory in the ministry of condemnation, much more does the ministry of justification abound in glory. Indeed, what once, had, what once had glory has lost its glory because of the greater glory. For if what was set aside came through glory, much more has the permanent come in glory. Since then, we have such a hope. We act with a great boldness, not like Moses, who put a veil over his face to keep the people of Israel from gazing at the end of the glory that was being set aside. But their minds were hardened, indeed, to this very day, when they hear the reading of the Old Covenant. That same veil is still there, since only in Christ is it set aside. Indeed, to this very day, whenever Moses is read, a veil lies over their minds. But when one turns to the Lord, the veil is removed. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And all of us, with unveiled faces, seeing the glory of the Lord as though reflected in a mirror, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, the Spirit. Here ends the lesson. And now let us pray for the church in the world, for the mission of the church, that it may extend the peace and the love of Christ to all people. For Michael, our presiding bishop, for Jennifer Ann, our bishop, for Brother Joe, our community servant, and for all of our church leaders, for all clergy and ministers, that they may be ever faithful servants of your word and sacraments. For unity in the church, that our scandalous divisions may be healed for the poor, the hungry, and the thirsty, for the destitute and the unemployed, that we may share with them the riches of creation and free the world of poverty and famine. For Joe, our president, and for Doug, our governor, and for all the leaders of this nation, city, and state, and for the leaders of the nations of the world, that they may bring justice and peace in all the earth. That God, who's begun this ministry, may bring it to fulfillment. We pray for those who've died, especially Howard, Brother Roger, Brian, and Dwight. 
We pray for those who are sick and suffering, especially Noah, Carol, Bill, Jerry, for all the victims of terrorism and violence, and for the victims of the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray for the Mercy of God community, for Brother Joe, Brother Tom, Brother Todd, Brother Richard, Brother William, Brother Max, Brother William, and for all the Mercy of God associates. Rejoicing in the fellowship of Francis and Claire and all your saints, let us commend one another and all of our lives to Christ our God. For the intentions of those who've asked our prayers and for all of your intentions. Our beloved which art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, forgive us as we forgive others. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lead us in your paths, O God, and grant that we may ever find our delight in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Alleluia. This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Alleluia. And glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Hallelujah.